of nursery admissions in the national capital. The sham doesn't just stop with the enormous fees and donations for admissions. The final admission list, before that final list is out, and most of those schools justify their actions. Sakshi Khanna and Smriti Adani with that. The Queen's Valley School in Dwarka. Even before their first admission list is out, this school has seats on offer. In exchange for rupees 30,000. Admission guaranteed on payment. There's no way to come to the final. It's really difficult to get a child admitted in any part of Delhi. Quarter one, I'll have to pay around 23,000. And if you apart from this, if you are asking for 30,000 in cash. Pay up or you have nowhere to go. Schools justify their demand citing the government order that 25% of all seats be reserved for students from economically weaker sections. The school, which is supposed to bear the expense, passes it on to parents seeking admission for their children. Yet the government refuses to accept that nursery seats are indeed for sale. कुछ पता तो चले कि कहाँ हो रहा है ऐसा ऐसी हवा में बात करने से तो कोई फायदा नहीं ना कोई आपके जहन में या कोई आपके पास केस लेकर आए हम उसको रेफर कर देंगे Every year, two lakh parents battle it out for just about 20,000 nursery seats. Despite the right to education act that is expected to reduce the pressure, the inability of the government to play effective watchdog ensures that admissions into nursery remain a nightmare. With Sakshi Khanna in New Delhi, Smriti Adani. So is there any hope for parents looking for fairness as they try to get their little ones into school? Joining us tonight in the studio, Sumit Bora, he runs the website nurseryadmissions.com. Mr. Bora, thanks so much for joining us. You, of course, run a website that has about 40,000 parents on its rolls. What you're seeing over here, is, is, this the, is this what confronts most parents or is it just a minority? The fact that schools will ask for donations up to 30, 40, 50,000 which will not have a receipt, which are basically meant to guarantee admissions. Basically it's like, you know, opening a can of worms. Uh, these are not schools, these are like shops running, uh, who open the school, by their schools and most of them are property dealers. So, uh, the, like, uh, no uh, respectable or old established school is doing this. All the new schools who are not very sure whether they will be able to fill the seats or not, first is in that. Okay. Second is, like, they are encashing on the fact that people are scared that they won't be able to get any seat anywhere. So, they are taking money to make it sure that... That's the disturbing reality. I apologize for interrupting you, Sumit. We have our first caller for this evening, Gaurav Varma. Gaurav, go ahead. What's your question? Yeah, hi. There is, uh, in the schools, the pointing system has came up. But it's so confusing that every school is using it as per its own needs. Take an example of K.R. Mughal. When they were issuing the forms, the point number system was different. Yeah. When all of us were in between, the point system changed. Right. So your, so your question is to whether there can be a standard point system? Is that what you're asking? So yeah, standard system and why not they, they should be in a portal. Right. Where yeah. all the schools mm -hmm. has a right. ethnic point system which is across all the schools in and the database is collected from MCD right. and parents know alright if I am entering my kid's name. Right. So I know which school automatically gets shortlisted. Right. And then yes, there is a clear list of right. drawings which can be taken and a draw can happen on that. Right, that's a suggestion that you're giving Gaurav. Thanks very much for calling in Amit, you want to, Sumit, you want to respond to that? Yeah, actually what he's trying to say is when Kyan Mangalam declared the point system, it was XYZ, 
Uh, so you when you start a football game, you cannot do, do change the rules in between. So just see that is it possible to have a standard point system which yeah, yeah, to what kind of, we have proposed to the government for a common admission form or common admission system like it happens in the university. But the school lobby doesn't want that. Because if it is done, you know what will happen, that all of the schools, it will become very fair. Mm. And, and the, the, the hierarchy is like this, it's school one, charge, one school charges a fees of 2,000 rupees and others other charging a uh, tuition fee of 9,000 rupees. Okay. So it, it's not so possible. It's so not possible. It, 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 it is possible, but school lobby won't let that happen. All of these, let's get in a question from Sandeep Arora. Sandeep, what's your question? Yeah, uh, hi uh, everybody. So uh, my question is to submit. Uh, so Mr. I was just thinking, I, I, I'm a regular follower of, of your site. Thank and, you. and, and there were a couple of uh, like, uh, things coming out of different schools. I myself have been a victim of uh, these schools. Like I've got a call from almost three to four schools where they have asked shamelessly for money directly. In fact, I, I can tell you my experience where uh, one, one of the school principal directly asked for a uh, big chunk of amount. So, uh, can, can we have any, any uh, if, if there's a money is the only thing, so let's, let's make it official and whosoever pays the money can get the admission. Should, should be taken by the government. Uh, you just make it a pure business thing? No, like, uh, it's, uh, no, no, no. The thing can go to the integration department and it's, it's totally illegal uh, by the RTE and the government and all the facts. So, the only thing is what the, these people are doing is they're just and catching the uh, you know the, the parents the way the, the, the panic among the parents they're catching that. Uh, just uh, we're going to take a quick break now, but before that, just one clarification. When you say violation of guidelines, what is the guideline? Because most parents end up paying something of a re non-refundable fee to schools, ten thousand, fifteen thousand, whatever it is. What is what are the guidelines and what have they violated in this case? Uh, like the, the basic of the guidelines is if you want to take a refund of the fees from any school, they can just get one month tuition fee, one month tuition fee and your uh, resolution fee and your admission fee. And they have to refund rest of the fees if you apply within one month. Okay, but the, what they are doing here is they are taking the money in cash and they don't get a receipt. So do they need a proof? So you don't have a legal receipt for that and you don't know how much you can get back. Actually, these guidelines should be out very clearly as well. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, we'll take much more of your calls and worries on nursery admissions. You pay for nursery admissions and have really little choice. That IBM Network Expose uh, that we played out earlier. And with us in the studio is Sumit Mora from admissionsnursery.com. Um, and we're taking your calls as well. So with one of the questions many of the parents did ask us is why is it that schools, why is it illegal for a school, for example, to charge a certain amount as an admission fee? Why not just make it more transparent? Can the principal, for example, who we, uh, we, we saw on that CNN ID and expose, uh, actually saying that she wanted 30,000, can she be prosecuted or is there a way no, to no, the like If you, if you make uh, bribe but legal, then don't you also legal? It's like asking for a bribe. It's, it's the same thing. It's like for asking for a bribe. Mm -hmm. So because when you the, when you are ch uh, charging the fees, when you charge the tuition fees, when you charge the admission fees, when you charge the non-refundable cautious fee, well, cautious fees, what? Why are you charging donation? It's right. like yeah. So it's not capitation that we're talking about here. It's yeah. very clearly a bribe. Right. It's, it's a bribe. Yeah. Yeah. It's a black money. Yeah, black money. Mm -hmm. so that's black that's black money. That's black money. Black money. Don't do like as well. Lakshmi Raman, our next caller. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my, my question is that uh, this uh, whole admission follows uh, the integrity of this exercise. Can it be subjected to a random audit or can it be covered under uh, RTI? That's my question. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, can, uh, it is covered uh, under RTE, RTI both. And you can uh, put any of your query, all the schools uh, like uh, are, which are uh, either uh, given some uh, land or uh, some funds or end up benefit by the government are under the RTA. Those schools can be questioned, not the private schools that are unaided, not in the support of government. And then just about coming to the end of the show, just one last question to you. Do you believe that as long as demand supply is not going to be addressed, this problem, we may discuss, it, we may expose it, but it's not going to end? Uh, I think the solution is uh, uh, like, you know, uh, the, we can, uh, the, the type of, you know, the level we have of central schools. If we make it, we have improve the you know women's schools, mm -hmm. and so that you know people like me also would wouldn't mind sending a kid to a central school instead of getting harassment. So only solution is improvement of government schools, better infrastructure, more number of schools. 
There is no other solution. Right. Eventually, it does come down to the government and the government's responsibility yeah. to provide better education and more comprehensive education for children across the board. I would like to add one more thing. The free hand given to school lobby is also one of the main causes. The free hand to make the guidance of school, like they are making the guidance on their own. And it certainly must be more accountable. But we really do have to leave it over there. So, Vitora, thanks so much for joining us here on 8 p.m. Prime. That's all we have time for here. Of course, the debate is continuing on India at 9. That's right. You can write into our website, ibnlive.com, as well with your issues and what you face. That's all we have time for. So, as we said, thanks for watching.